And I realize how important repairing relationships is for a good life. But we know good and well, it doesn't always happen the way we want it to happen. Can I get an amen anywhere this morning? Amen. Now, I believe there are many reasons that can cause a relationship to go bad. Whether it's in a marriage, with family, on the job, with a friend, or other close relationships. Now, I realize when you have a relationship problem that it can be difficult to find a solution. But I hope with all of my heart that this message today will help you find some answers to help you in repairing relationships. I believe it's critical to gain a clear understanding of how to improve and strengthen our relationship. Now, one thing is perfectly clear to me is that most human beings, regardless of age, gender, nationality, or social background, have a desire for a connection with other people. In fact, without human connection, life can be dull, empty, without purpose, and without enjoyment. Now, our relationships help make us who we are because we are connected with individuals who have experienced and conquered things in life we have not yet even confronted. Do you know what I'm talking about? As you begin to grow older and move from being a child to a teenager and into adulthood, you're going to find that things change. People change. Life changes. Politics really change. Oh, you know what I'm saying. And these kind of relationships, depending on their bad or good, can have an impact on your life. So they're important for us to talk about this today. It's also been my experience when you meet people who have been where you are trying to go, I believe it gives you a new insight to make better decisions in your life. I've always been a person to find people that are not stuck in the same old thing over and over again because they say you're really crazy when you keep doing it over and over. But I used to try, I try to find people that are where I'm trying to go in life, whether it's the spiritual perspective or the natural perspective. People that have been successful can offer you good advice. Are you hearing me this morning? Just think back when you were young and searched for others to hang out with, desired security, wanted a feeling of being connected. And even though you may not have fully understood it, you really wanted to be loved and appreciated. You see, people try to play this game, but everybody wants some love and they want to be appreciated. And usually when people act out just the opposite of love, it's because they really need something. <laughs> and who is love? Oh, Lord. Who is love? God is love. Now see, you gain those things from, I'm talking about love and appreciation. You gain those things sometimes from your parents, grandparents, siblings, and even other relatives. You also desire interaction with friends and neighbors and schoolmates, and later on, co-workers. Now as we mature, we naturally seek out more intimate relationships, and this oftentimes ends up in marriage. Now at this point, we begin to build our own family and need to strengthen our relationship with our spouses, our children, grandchildren, and even great-grandchildren. I also believe none of these relationships will be healthy unless God is the foundation of everything that you do in this life. I am a living witness to trying it the other way. I came to tell you this morning, it does not work. If you do not have Christ in your life, you're going to have more problems than if you don't. Because you have no one that you believe in to turn to. We know good and well, there are times, no matter how we love our spouse, our children, our grandchildren, our, our relatives, there are times when it feels like nobody cares about you, period. And when those times happen, we always have the Lord who's on our side. And if we really believe that God loves you, then you'll find a way to make that other situation work out. It amazes me how this generation seems to think 
You get married for five days, five weeks, five years. When you really get married and you're really serious about being married, you better know that's the one you want. Because marriage to Christ is a lifetime. Now, I'm not saying there are not situations that come into your life where you have to move away from that marriage situation, but that's got to be pretty dramatic. And that dramatic really is showed up in the Word of God. It's very clear how you can just move away. Adultery is very clear. You can move on. Are you still with me? Yes. See, your relationships are important to God. And the Bible is filled with instructions and examples of human relationships of every kind and how you can improve it. See, God's desire for you to live a joyful and peaceful life because he loves you and he wants the best for you. I don't care what people tell you. I don't care what the enemy speaks into your mind. The God that I'm talking about this morning, he wants the best for you. But what do you really want for yourself? See, if you want the best, you've got to go after the best. The best woman, the best man. And how do you know if you have the best? Because they have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Now, I'm not saying they're perfect. Nobody's perfect. But as a Christian, that's what we strive to do. Because we want to live in the image of Jesus Christ. You see, God knows that much of our joy and peace depends on how we get along with other people and how well we manage problems and conflict with others. Because regardless of what you think, coming to Christ does not mean you won't have some challenges. Everybody's going to have challenges. And it seems to me, it's been my experience, that when you come to Christ, you seem to get more challenges because the enemy's coming after you. Because he wants you dead. He wants to steal your faith, steal your joy, steal your peace, destroy your family. Is anybody listening to me? He's coming to destroy your family and your children. So you have to have a way to prepare yourself so that you can take care of them. And the only way I know is through Jesus Christ. And I can say it because it's worked for me. It doesn't really matter how the circumstances seem to unfold in your life. God has already planned out a way out. That's why I love it. That's why I stay in the Word. And sometimes I have to pull myself out of the Word. Because sometimes I just stay in it too long. But there's so much in there that's going to help me make myself be a better man, a better husband, a, a better pastor, a better friend to somebody. Are you listening? you got to be so thirsty and hungry for the Word of God that no matter what else is going on, you got to find some quiet time to get in there with Jesus. And sometimes that is not easy. One other thing before I go on. Stop blaming somebody else for getting in your way when you want to get in the presence of God. There are no excuses. You go to work because you want to get paid. If you really want a real payment and reward, take some time out and talk to Jesus. You'll be amazed how he'll solve your problem. Now I want you to understand that some people you meet in life need more attention than others. Now stay with me. However, as I shared with you earlier, if you approach everyone with unconditional love of God, everyone will be affected in a positive way if they accept your gift of love. Now, often what you say is not as important as how and when you say it. We're still talking about relationships. See, our focus should never be to embarrass anyone, but we should encourage them in the ways of the Lord. Now, this does not mean, and hear this clearly, this does not mean that every sentence we use has to have a spiritual flavor, meaning you don't need to quote the Bible to everybody you're trying to build a relationship with. You do it in the appropriate time, and we'll talk about that. But use the words of encouragement to let the person know you care about their needs and their wants. Everyone you meet should feel like they're important 
and that they matter. See, one mistake we sometimes make in relationships is trying to give other people what we need instead of giving them what they need. Are you with me? See, the truth is we don't take the time to study people, to find out their individual needs, because we tend to go by what we assume rather than what we observe. If you spend time with people to develop relationships and closely observe them in various environments, you will find out their needs. In fact, as you stay consistently in prayer and the Word of God, Lord will show you their need and even their wants. Now, another problem that hurts people in building positive relationships is people who are stuck on themselves are self-centered. Now, I know there's not anybody out here, but you need to hear it. Self-centeredness is often viewed as the most unappealing personality trait in building a perfect relationship, or even maintaining a relationship. See, most people struggle and try to maintain a sense of compassion and understanding toward others. However, self-centered people do not even take the time to understand another person's point of view or even their feelings. These people don't really care what you have to say because whatever they are doing in the moment is more important than your conversation. You know anybody like that? Great one. Self-centered people believe they are always right, so your input is not even valid. It's all about me. If you want to hang out with me, you have to get on my train now or let be left behind in the train station. You can see it all around you in the world, but people will seem to have a concern for others, but not at the expense of their own needs. See, people are good at saying stuff. As an example is the internet, the news that we see. What people, people will say anything, but their actions always show who they are. Oh, I love you. I'll do anything for you. I'm with you. I'm going to be with you. When you go to that place in Washington, I'll be with you. Unfortunately, self-centered people are self-driven. And they're more concerned with their image and their materialistic things and issues that affect countries, other people, or even this entire world. This is not God's way. And this type of thinking will destroy any chance for a positive relationship and will eventually require the need for repairing relationships. A person who is self-centered relies on himself and not God. These people have no room in their heart for God or true love of another person. Self-centered people are outside of the will of God and outside of His purpose and His plan for them. Now we know God desires for us to trust Him more than anything else in the world. And when we rather trust ourselves, it will lead to chaos, disappointment, and possibly destruction. See, only in a personal relationship with God through Jesus will we find the wisdom, say wisdom, wisdom, to repairing relationships. Let me show you something in Psalms chapter 10, verses 4 through 6 in the King James. It says this, The wicked, through the pride of his countenance, will not seek after God. God is not all in his thoughts. His ways are always grievous. Thy judgments are far above and out of sight as for all his enemies. He's puffed up or mocks them. He has said in his heart, I shall not be moved, for I shall never be in adversity. See, the wicked are evil person, have no need for God. And they are ignorant and full of too much pride to seek out God's wisdom. The truth be told, love and self-centered spirit in a person cannot coexist at the same time. There's never going to be a balance between a person who is selfish and self-centered and a person who has love. There's got to be a way to connect that relationship. I'm going to show you. I'm, I'm going somewhere. You see, this tells me love will push self-centeredness right out of a person because love is not puffed up. Love is not full of itself. 
Love is not impatient, it's not cruel, and it's not easily provoked. See, the word of God tells us love will never fail. Oh, I love it. Love will never fail. That's why when people really get married, they really are serious about marriage, and they love each other, how is that possibly going to fail? Real love can't fail. Fake love always has an excuse. I believe when a person is focused only on themselves, they have no idea God is really in control of all things. The truth is they need to be centered and focused on God. The only way this is going to happen is if they have a personal encounter with the Lord. Now, in order to have a good relationship, we must start thinking more about others and noticing their needs, not yours. I hope that's a spoken for me. You see, when we walk in love, it has a way of drawing out information about others that will help us focus on their most important needs. I'm not talking about getting people in the corner and talking to them until they cannot take any more. You know what I'm saying. Some people just beat you down. This would be an invasion of their space, or like a police investigation, instead of a fact-finding conversation. What really is important is having a mindset to listen. Say listen. Listen. And I need that. And talk over the, with the, not talk over the person, that's what I'm trying to say. When you're having a conversation, and I'm learning, sometimes you think you've got all the answers, but you don't. And you've got to learn to listen and be respectful in the conversation. And I'm talking about both parties. You see, what happens is, we, it's really important having a mindset to listen and not talk over the person once again, but receive their information for processing in the moment or later so you can provide the best option for repairing their relationship. Sometimes everything is so heated you cannot speak in the moment. Or they're so checked out, it's not going to make any difference in that moment. So you take the time to gather all that input so that you can prepare to talk with that person later. Look at somebody and say, you're going to have to talk to them sooner or later. <laughs> What's also important is once you have gathered sufficient information about this individual, then get into action and planning on how to improve the relationship. There are many ways we can go about doing good for others. But it all takes direction and guidance from the Holy Spirit. And never forget that. God does not expect you to build a relationship without his input. You're going to fail. You've got to have God and his wisdom. Let me show you a, a, a scripture to help you with Acts. Acts chapter 10, verse 37 through 38 says this. The word I say you know, which was published throughout all Judea, and began from Galilee, after the baptism with John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. God is with you. God is with you. God is with you. God is with you. But what are you believing? We've got to stop playing with God and walk by faith and not by sight. If you're really saying you're a Christian, you've got to have faith that God can repair that relationship. There's nothing too hard for God. If we believe still that God can do the impossible, then he can certainly fix our stupid relationship situations we get ourselves into. We're a stubborn people. We're just stubborn sometimes. Don't want to change. And I'm talking to me just like I'm talking to you. We all got the same issue. Even some of us that think we're so right. We got to change. 
And we got to change for the better to make the relationship work out. Who in here raise your hand that wants to be unhappy? Well, since I got no hands, and I, my assumption is, and they say they'll assume too much, my belief is that you want a good relationship. Amen. <laughs> you know, God is good. Amen. So right now together, we're going to explore some examples of God in God's word about repairing relationships to help us improve and build better relationships with one another. Now I want you to keep in mind as we do this that relationships are a way in which two things are connected. Two things are connected. You're not by yourself. Two things are connected. Now the fundamental purpose of a relationship is to establish a close personal bond between Two people are groups. Now these bonds can produce a real sense of friendship, real love for one another, a solid outcome in economic transactions, depending on the type of relationship. Could be at the job. I want you to understand there are many types of relationships. But what I want to do is focus on relationships in general between one human being to another, regardless of gender. I'm talking about torn relationships that need to be repaired and just a few ways on how we can accomplish repairing relationships. Now first, let's look at how we can better communicate. Somebody say communication. Communication. This to me is one of the primary reasons why we have problems in our relationship. Because we have a problem communicating with one another. Now I realize it's not easy to express how we feel. Or even hear what is being said. But it's critical that we prioritize communication no matter how difficult the circumstances. See, so often we want to express and communicate, but we may not have the best words or examples to share with others. Some people just are not good at communicating. I mean, don't put them down because they have a problem telling you what, what, what's going on. Some people just are not good at that. And some people just are quiet people. They're just kind of laid back. I used to be shy, couldn't tell it now, much as I run my mouth, but I used to be kind of an introvert kind of guy. I used to be very quiet, laid back. Uh, you know, and I guess because I was a musician, I was on the drums, I'm back in the back, I'm in my own zone. I didn't talk a lot with people, so now you can't even shut me up. In some cases, we feel so strong about our position. Now listen to this close that we don't allow the other person to express themselves, therefore not really listening and receiving what they are saying in the moment. This can become frustrating and cause the person to shut down. And this is not what we want, because we need to let others speak, and both parties must be good listeners to make relationships work out better. Both of us have to listen. You've got to listen. And sometimes, and I know it happens to me, I'm so busy trying to figure out the reply that I'm going to have that I haven't heard a thing she said. <laughs> and then where the frustration comes in. And then you think, oh, I thought you said that. She didn't say that. Look at somebody and say, we all got to fix this. <laughs> Someone said this, and I like what they said. If you just communicate, you can get by. But if you communicate skillfully, you can work miracles. Mm -hmm. Now this saying has some substance because with Jesus Christ, we have the wisdom to communicate skillfully, so we should tap into the wisdom of God to improve our relationship. Now we know through the Bible in Proverbs that wisdom is the principal thing. And with wisdom, you get understanding. And with wisdom, we are able to recognize what the other person is struggling with so we can build better relationships. One thing I can say, and I'm going to say it in general, it seems like some people of color, and I'll use an example, African American, we seem to be folks that kind of hold stuff in sometimes that don't want to share what's really going on. That is not being a man or being 
a woman. Especially with someone you have a loving relationship with. We have to learn to express ourselves, no matter how hard it might be to do that. Because that relationship will never grow and mature if you don't just let it out. That's why I have no problem today telling you I got problems. I got problems, you got problems, everybody got problems. But I'm willing to fix it. Are you listening? Yes. See, remember God has all wisdom. And he's still in the business of miracles. And this is why I believe relationships can be improved and saved if God is the main thing in the relationship. I do not believe you will ever develop a positive and love-centered relationship without recognizing and operating in the philosophy there is always give and take in a solid relationship. Let me say it again. There is some giving and there is some taking in a solid relationship. I also believe in the early stages of relationships, communication can be challenging because we're unsure about so much. And in the later stages of relationships, this can also be powerful because the person has not changed to what we desire and we expect the same thing to happen. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You did something in 1985, in 1976, in 2000, and that person still looking at you, that's what you did, and you haven't changed that one bit. Mm -hmm. hey, Who is going to listen here? If we don't communicate, we really don't know what the other person is doing or has done to make a positive change. And they may be struggling, needing help, not judgment or negative comments. People need help in a relationship. Not your judgment and your negative comments about what they did in 1905. When you're in the early stages or the latter stages in a relationship, simple situations can feel overwhelming and confusion. Confusion sets in. And one may wonder if they should contact the other person by phone or if you really should just come one to one and talk about what is going on. I believe it's important to get into prayer about the specific situation that's going on and causing uneasy feelings and confusion in your relationship and seek God for guidance in when to have a conversation. I believe timing is everything. Say that after me. Timing is everything. I want you to make sure the conversation is coming from your heart with love. And you enter the conversation in control of your emotions and also your expectations. You may not get exactly what you wanted from the conversation, but you come out of it confident the person is trying to make a positive change to repair the relationship. See, our goal should always be to give and take by simply sharing our love for one another, respect, somebody say respect. Respect. Respect and understand and remember to trust God, knowing that he can bring us through any difficulties we may encounter in our relationship. It's important in any relationship, whether it's our family, our spouse, our friends, church members, or co-workers, they each have different histories. And it's important to have respect for all of our differences. Ain't nobody like you. God made you just the way you are. I'm just going to leave that at that. That's the whole time right there. We must understand in order to ensure we're properly repairing relationships that we recognize when a person needs alone time to get their thoughts and when they need reassurance and a loving embrace. Sometimes no one wants to hear your mouth. They just want a hug. Is anybody with me? Yes. They just want a hug. What does a hug do? It shows you care about somebody. You shouldn't be doing all of this and trying to get all back away from them. See, it's 
not always about talking and talking and talking, but just acknowledging with a loving hug how much you care for them and their opinion, even if they are not your opinion. See, sometimes just finding a quiet place to spend with the Lord and listening for His direction can make all the difference in a good or bad relationship. It will help you not shut down and bury your head in the sand, but it will help you move forward with being bold and courageous and express the care and love you have for the people that you are in a relationship with. I found it's the wisdom of God that provides us with the proper approach <coughs> needed to build better relationships. I'm not saying it's easy understanding what one another is doing in the moment or what they have done or even what they're thinking about. A person needs to have you be in a place where you can just embrace where they're going. I'm not saying it's easy once again what another person needs in relationship. But I believe over time, you can get some idea by their body language, facial expression, their anger, attitude, behavior, and their complaining, which all signal there needs to be a conversation. If the person is still not ready to talk, then we should continue to give them space and seek God for the wisdom for the right time, say right time, right time, right time to have a positive conversation about the relationship and make sure we support them with love. Mm -hmm. One thing I've found that also hinders a good relationship is making assumptions. Mm -hmm. And my advice is, don't make them. You may have been blessed to find the one person you love. And you may have gotten married, but don't ever assume that they will always understand you. The truth is, people as well as life changes. And it's our responsibility to learn to adopt to change. As our relationship begins to move forward, because this is critical to maintain joy, peace, mutual understanding, and great relationships. A great relationship is not just about expressing and listening, although it's important. But watch this but find the proper balance between the two. It's essential we establish mutual support and encouragement to avoid a breakdown in understanding. I'm talking about a breakdown in communication and making assumptions causing conflict and bitterness. I want you to understand avoiding one another and choosing to be quiet with the fear of more arguments is a sign of corrosion within the relationship. And we must be careful not to get caught up in this kind of destructive philosophy. Just because they hurt your little old feelings don't mean you're supposed to run out the door down the street and get a drink or run out down the street and drive around for 14 hours or go to a hotel and stay. It means take a moment out somewhere, reflect, think about how you're going to better build this relationship and when the timing is right, have a good conversation. You see, regardless of our feelings and emotions, we must take time to talk, which helps us promote understanding, alleviating frustrations, and creating a better flow of our emotions. Now, one final point about communication is the mutual respect for one another. And we must earn respect from one another. By expressing ourselves with honesty in a loving way, even if it's difficult and makes us look bad or uncorrupted. It's really important to choose a mutual, suitable time, once again, it's so critical, and a place to talk where there are no outside influences to hinder your conversation. We also must not, not allow ourselves to be distracted, but give our full attention to what is being said, listen with an open mind, Understand what is said without any judgment whatsoever. Speak clearly as possible and objectively, without blame, and respect the other person, even if their way of speaking is not what you really desire. Expect the outcome of the conversation to be positive. Have good expectations. 
expect the conversation to be a positive one and not like other conversations that didn't turn out the way you would have liked. Respect each other's feelings and emotions and their circumstances. If during the conversation you feel hurt, allow the person to complete their thought. Remember what was said and respond not with excuses, but if possible, provide a solution that will improve the relationship. Now, I took more time to share with you about the importance of communication in a good relationship because I believe in the natural and the spiritual realm is a key component to a great and wonderful relationship. Now, I'm going to give you just a few more things to think about in repairing a relationship before I close for today. I believe it's important that we express our sorrow to one in someone you've hurt. Even if it was not your fault, they do know we understand their hurt and we are available to do whatever is necessary to move forward and improve the relationship. Each person should ask for forgiveness. Say forgiveness. Forgiveness. We should ask for forgiveness for the hurt brought into the relationship, even if they were unaware this had happened. I'm not talking about or what I'm really talking about, I should say, is not a heartfelt sorrow. Here's what I mean. You know what we do. We do some over and over and over again, and what do we say? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm really, really, really sorry. If you're going to say you're sorry, mean it from the heart and follow it up with some real action. Because sorry is just drop on the ground. They just dead. If you don't follow with something that's going to be positive for us, the relationship. Now the thing about forgiveness from the heart is that it's an important step in, I believe, in repairing the relationship process. So let's look at what Apostle Paul tells us about forgiveness in the book of Ephesians. So we're going to look at Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32, and he amplified that. This is important to hear. It's a lot of scriptures, but you can check it out later on YouTube. Be kind and helpful to one another. Tender-hearted, compassionate, understanding, forgiving one another readily and freely, just as God in Christ also forgave you. It's easy to forgive somebody when you realize that God forgave somebody like you and me. When we forgive one another and extend God's grace and mercy to them, it not only frees them, but it releases him or her from anger at that offense. I believe real trust is built in relationships when actions speak louder than words, and steps are taken to avoid an intentional reoccurrence of hurt. This requires everyone in relationships to seek and take hold of accountability for change. Pray and support one another, take steps to break hurtful patterns and choices in life, and build trust and enable and sustain change. Now, there are many other ways to repair relationships, including getting constantly from spirit-filled men and women of God, including your pastor, and this can be helpful. Come on and stand up as I close. However, for this to be effective, your major goal should be by faith to continue a personal relationship with Jesus, that through the power of the Holy Spirit, you will get all the tools necessary to effectively move forward, repairing relationships. Well, I've run out of time for today, but before I close, I would like to invite you to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and your Savior. If you would like to have Jesus be your personal Lord and Savior out there this evening, or even in this church this morning, I want you to please repeat this very brief prayer after me, and this is what we call the sinner's prayer. Heavenly Father, forgive me for all of my sins. I believe that Jesus Christ was born and is your son. I believe Jesus died for my sins. And on the third day, he rose from the dead. Jesus, come into my heart and take control of my life and be my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, from this moment forward, I recognize you as my Lord and Savior. I desire to rule and reign with you forever. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen. Amen. If you repeated this prayer after me, now you're part of the wonderful kingdom of God. And what I would like you to do is find a church in your area or come down to New Covenant World Ministries in Hercules, California at the library and have worship with us so that you can begin to have a personal relationship with you, with the Lord, and you can find out what your purpose and the plan God has for your wonderful life. You know what? I always say this, but I mean it. It's been a blessing to be able to share with you what the Lord has for you this morning in this message entitled Repairing Relationships. If this teaching has been a blessing to you, make sure you let your friends and family know that we're here every Sunday and on Wednesday on YouTube. I pray that you enjoy this wonderful Sunday afternoon, and I do not want you to forget to tell your family and friends about us once again. May God continue to bless you and keep you, and it's my understanding that this COVID-19 is beginning to be a pandemic once again in China, so in the United States, we should be also very careful and, you know, do simple things that are required. Perhaps wear a mask or, and stay some distancing until, you know, you get whatever you need to help you through this process. Well, you know what? It's been wonderful being with you. May God bless you and keep you. I pray that you have a wonderful afternoon because in California, out here in Hercules, the sun is shining. And we thank the Lord that the rain has stopped for a while. Well, goodbye until next time. I'm looking forward to seeing each and every one of you then.